Hi, I'm Jerry Ford, and welcome to this month's of edition of the Mug Rug Club, where every month I will be doing a new design for you and putting out a video and showing you how to, how to do it. Every month's going to have a slightly different technique and something different that goes along with it. So they're not all same shape, same style. So every month's going to be different. If you're not already a member of the Mug Rug Club, then send me an email at waltzquilt at yahoo.com and I'll be happy to add you to the list. And every month I will send out a notification that I've voted, uploaded the video and that I've already sent you the instruction sheet as well as the PES embroidery file. Why I'm only in PES is because I'm still an amateur digitizer and all I have is machines that, that utilize a PES format. So yes, you can convert them to other designs and I can even convert them to other designs, but I haven't ha properly been able to test on different formats and brands of machines. So you're welcome to, to, uh, to convert it. If you can't, let me know. I have software that can convert it for you, but I'd rather you know how to use your own software because yours is going to work best for you. So anyway, this is this month's. Isn't it cute? So this is a really nice little design that for an aunt, a friend, a grandmother, or your mother, whatever. And you can always put a treat right in here. You can put in that pretty napkin, spoons, candy. This is the type that actually has not only a pocket, but it has a pocket back here that gives you a nice edge rather than having a zigzag along the edge, which is a different style. So anyway, let's get started. I'm going to show you what you need to do to make this fabulous mug rug. <laughs> okay, for this month's project, you're going to need a few things. You're going to need your 5 by 7 frame or larger for your machine. You need, and I have it loaded with no-show mesh stabilizer, but you can use any type of stabilizer you wish to use. This, for this project, it really doesn't matter. Uh, you're going to need some painter's tape or any kind of paper tape, whether it be Kimberbell tape or Floriani, the pink tape, that kind of thing, in order to hold some pieces together while you're stitching. Uh, you're going For the fabric, you're going to need to have a six inch by six inch square of a light background fabric. Uh, and this one, actually, I treated this one with Terriel Magic so it's nice and stiff, and that does help reduce any type of puckering because this is the piece that's going to receive most of the embroidery. Okay, you're going to need to have one um, three and a half inch by six inch rectangle of a pr some kind of a print fabric, and that's going to be the right side of the, of the uh, mug rug. You're going to need a pocket piece which is going to be three and a half inches by seven inches. And you want it, here's the three and a half by seven. You want it folded in half lengthwise and pressed nice and crisp. For the back of the uh, mug rug, you're going to need to have two six inch by nine inch rectangles and then fold it in half lengthwise and, and pressed nice and crisply. And then you're going to need a piece of batting or insole bright or some kind of either of the two, or both if you like, if you want it thicker, you can. Six inches by eight inches of batting. You're going to need uh, the, you need embroidery bobbin thread, of course. I recommend that you have a pair of curved embroidery scissors because that helps trimming a lot easier. <laughs> then you're going to need, uh, I recommend these colors for your embroidery, but you can do any color you like. But I've got black and yellow two shades of pink, red, orange, and a leaf green. And so now we're ready to embroider. So you want to load the embroidery file for February's mug rug, and I think it's just called February.pes into your machine, and then we'll load up and get started. I have my design loaded into my machine, and today I'm using Baby Lock's Destiny embroidery machine, my absolute favorite. So if you've never used a baby lock, go to your nearest dealer and try one out. You're going to absolutely love these machines. They're so user friendly. Okay, so I've got it loaded into the machine and I have, I have loaded my machine with red embroidery thread just so that you can see what's going on. 
and we're going to stitch the first color stop. Okay, it's going to be a placement to show you where to put your batting. Next, I'm going to put my batting on the machine, on the hoop. This is called floating on the top, and so that the ends of it cover all of the embroidery stitches that we've already done. So this, that was the placement we did in the first color stop. This color stop, we're gonna do what's called the tack down. So we're just gonna tack down the batting. going to trim this batting away from the outside edges simply because it's going to make it easier to turn and you want to just doesn't have to be super close but you want to get it fairly close cut off any of this excess Okay, this third color stop is going to show you where to put the light background fabric down. And it's a placement stitch for the next applique piece. I'm going to float this piece on the top and I want to leave at least a quarter of an inch seam all the way around more if you can but it, it's not necessary to, to leave more than a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to tack down this piece of background fabric. Now I'm going to load the other colors in order to do the embroidery. I'm going to do color stop number five, which in this case is yellow, to start the heart design. Uh, is right there. We're going to be stitching that out next. And so that's color stops number uh, five through 13. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fast forward through this. Okay, that went on a little too long, so what I did it is I went ahead and I finished stitching this off camera, and I just wanted to bring to the attention that the last thing it did on color stop number 13 is it did a black line up and down right here, and what that is is that's your placement for your next piece. This is we're going to be putting the background here, so, but wait. Before we put the background down, we've got to put the pocket in place. And so we're taking this long piece, the three and a half by seven inch piece, fold it in half. And I, let's see, I'm going to just lay this so that it's sticking beyond here and it's going a, at least a quarter of an inch off there. So like this, so we're going to put little, so that hangs over and that hangs over. And on top of that, we are going to put this one, which is the background piece. Okay, and put this back into the machine. And now I think I'm just gonna go ahead and finish stitching in red so that it'll blend in. 
although it keeps telling you switching from black to red, black to red, I'm just gonna leave the red in here for the rest of the, of the mug rug. And now this is going to stitch the seam. So I'm just going to hold it here. Okay. okay. Now I could trim this excess here if I like, but I'm just going to leave it. It doesn't matter. I'm going to Finger press this down firmly, and then this side, press that down, okay? And now the next thing it's going to do is it's just going to tack the end pieces down. Okay. So what I'm going to do is hold this down as it's doing this, this border area. Now, I don't want it to catch here. I could tape it, but I don't like to tape. So what you can do is you can actually run your machine by just holding the button in, and it won't go any faster until you let it go. Okay, now it's cleared, and there we go. I'll bet you didn't know your machine did that. Okay. And now... This is the last one. So here I'm going to put these so that the fold is on the top. I think I like the, I like the big flowers. I want it to extend about a quarter to a half an inch. Wait a minute, where's the fold? Oh, wrong way. <laughs> Here's the fold, let me see. Doesn't matter whether you put the one in first and the other one in second, it doesn't matter. It just has to extend beyond the stitching by at least a quarter of an inch. Okay, and then this one goes on the top. Again, you want it to extend the edges of the seams, and it wouldn't hurt to tape this down. Okay. Alrighty, I'm just taping that down. And then put this back in the machine. And now it's going to finish. There we go. I always keep my hand near the button when it's uh, going around. <laughs> Didn't make any difference, but got caught. That's okay. That's why you need to stay close when it's doing this kind of thing. And it's going to seal it in good with that bean stitch. And a bean stitch is a triple stitch. It does two stitches forward and one back, just like the stretch stitch on your sewing machine. Now as it gets close, watch, I'm going to stop. Get that little bit of tape out of the way. there. But I'm going to hold this in. Just hold the start button in. And it won't go any faster than that until you let go. That way I know I'm going to get over that seam or without a problem. And it won't get caught. And I am um, Pretty sure, so I can let it go. <laughs> now I'm going to go ahead and take this off. All done. <laughs> and now I'm going to remove it from the hoop everything from the hoop, my hoop aside, and it's all done. So all I have to do is clip my 
corners and cut those seams down to about a quarter of an inch. See, I don't have to cut out any batting. That's why it helped to get that batting out after that very first step. So now I'm going to, if you can get your corners straight most of the way by just taking your, putting your thumb into the corner, fold down two ends, pinch it, push it through. You're 90% the way there. Same thing here, pushing my corners, fold over that fold. Okay, two more. one. All right. Now I'm going to get my point turner or if you don't tell anybody I won't. It's best not to use your scissors but if you do put it into the corner but do not push with your scissors. Push the fabric down on to the scissors. But I'm going to go ahead and use my point turner for the rest of these. I'm just going to use my point turner to pull it out. Okay, it's all finished. Turned out really cute. It has a cute little pocket. You can always put some candies in here. And it's done. So thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoy. You are enjoying this series on the uh, Mug Brug of the Month Club that we have going. If you're not already a member, uh, you can send me an email request at waltzquilt at yahoo.com and I'll be happy to send you this month's design and the instruction sheet. And if you want to be put on the club and get automatic notifications that the video has been loaded and that I will automatically send you the pattern and the PES embroidery file, then also let me know you want to be a member of the club. And until next month, I will see you later. Happy sewing. Bye.